Now, spirit, is that which we classify or technically classify as energy in all its forms. And to highlight on the fact that energy is actually conscious, we will call it divine energy. <clears throat> a classic example of divine energy, a divine conscious energy is electricity, the only begotten of the Father. I'll get into why I call it electricity, the only begotten of the Father. To go now by modern uh, interpretations, <clears throat> energy is extracted from matter. We, we come up from the system, that's what we've been taught. Which means energy is a form of matter, such as heat. You burn wood, you get heat. That's energy, that's where energy comes from. But contrary to what we've been actually told, this is not true, this is not the case. This is an inversion. Energy births matter, or spirit births matter, not the other way around. Spirit births inyam, flesh. <clears throat> spirit, or energy, finds expression in flesh, not the other way around. This belief now that um, energy comes from matter, has led uh, the world of science to the conclusion that one day our universe will run down. One day the universe will cease to be because the heat energy behind the Big Bang will run out. The first and second laws of thermodynamics are built upon this erroneous principle. <clears throat> the universe will never cease to be. It is eternal. As God is eternal. Before energy can have a form in matter, it first subsists. Now I'm getting into Kabbalah. It first subsists unconditioned, unmanifested, without start, no end. In the Kemetic schools, they call this data uh, the Amen. <clears throat> now, within this Amen, it is from here where non-energy and non-matter we find it at rest. The iron soft. Iron is what becomes energy <clears throat> in the physical. And soft, also fear, wisdom, is what becomes matter. Let's get into matter now. Matter <clears throat> is divine spirit, energy, conditioned by the tension, strains, and pressures of the vibratory world, conditioned into thinking, it has form where there is only but uh, vibration and motion. Matter is spirit in a state of amnesia. Matter inyama umoya ekosiwe. Inyama is what it was before it became Inyama. So that, so that, this happens so that matter, for all intents and purposes, may operate as matter. So that a rock, for example, can operate as a rock. A hard, stubborn rock that if you were to go to it and say, Hey, a rock, and the rock goes, Yes, <laughs> thou art one with light, thou art one with spirit, with the wind, with the birds, with the, the rock which just never hear you. The, the rock will not be able to understand you because it's in a state of amnesia. Now, uh, if you were to <clears throat> take this now and tell, uh, and tell a person, uh, and tell a friend, hey, listen, <laughs> do you know that you're actually it? You're the spirit. You're the I. Duped by tension, strain, compression, and the pressures in the vibratory world into thinking you have density, you have an identity, gender, class, you name it, all those things, where is, there is only but vibration and motion towards that. Now, if you're to say this to a person, 
you will get the same reaction as the rock. The rock will never hear you because our amnesia is designed to contain the human experience. That's what it is. But in actual fact, I am that I am. I am that I am. I am the eternal I or meta is the eternal I that becomes it. The it, the I stand for all or the I that stands for all, sorry. The eternal I, spirit and of course T, the it, the T representing again vibration, motion and action. Vibration, motion and action. The T, umka T, iska T, matter. Now, in our holy writings, <coughs> matter is symbolized as mother, mother, the feminine. It is through the woman, Eve, through whom man or light falls into matter. It is through Eve that energy falls into matter of the world of sin. The Bible says, Behold, I was brought forth in iniquity, and in my sin my mother conceived me. The word iniquity means uneven, unequal. <laughs> this is where it's going to get weird now and trippy. <clears throat> And the word, because I'm going to get into um, the, me the root meaning of the word sin. Which is taken from the Pi root or the Proto-Indo-European root, Cynthia. Which is a collective form of uh, essence. Meaning, becoming. <laughs> and the present particle, being. From the root uh, S which means to be, <laughs> which means to be. That is now the root definition of sin. <laughs> sin means to be. And what is being? What is being is vibration, motion. Now, That's what it means. It's going to get trippy. It's going to get very trippy. Now, <clears throat> this root word now, S, it forms all, if not part, of words um, such as entity, essence, essential, bodhisattva. And what does that mean? Bodhisattva is a title, <clears throat> a title in Mahayana, Mahayana Buddhism. A title bestowed upon you once you have attained supreme wisdom. Once reached <clears throat> perfect knowledge or, into, or the height of intuaso or gnosis or the height of a certain type of intuaso, gnosis. Once you reach that state, you are called a bodhisattva. The word now is made up uh, from two words. The word uh, bodhi <clears throat> meaning Perfect knowledge. Buddha. Perfect knowledge. And the word sattva. Meaning reality. Being. Taken from the word sat. Or sand and sand. Which becomes saint. <laughs> meaning existing. True. Virtuous. Again. From what root? From the root S, meaning to be. That is the root word for sin. And now S in Sanskrit is, uh, means <clears throat> one whose essence is perfect knowledge. One whose essence is perfect knowledge. <laughs> now, um, if you are hearing me, <laughs> if you are hearing me, and you are here and understanding where I am going with this. You can't help but laugh. You can't help but laugh, Afuitu. <laughs> because, yes, it's 
kukhoshisiwe hayi kancane so now you have in one corner of the world an entire system a people who are quite happy naturally happy with being in sin or being to the extent that if you are really happy with the state they call you a bodhisattva they call you a bodhisattva then there's us who there's us the traumatized thoroughly traumatized by colonial christian rhetoric you're a sinner you're a shameful dirty sinner you were born into sin <laughs> this thing is ingrained in us from an early age we are taught to be anti being we are taught to be anti being to be anti life constantly yearning praying for the day when sin or being will be put to rest not understanding not realizing that the root meaning this is why this is the importance of root meanings not realizing that the root meaning of the word sin means to be to be life motion be movement vibration friction ulam that is what it means if you don't want to be in sin then you cannot be in the flesh because this world is created by sin which is what vibration this world is created for sin vibration that is what sin is not this airy fairy thing which is neither here nor there that no one can actually explain can the conscious black folk they're trying to they say it doesn't exist you are still denying it it's a form of being anti life because we don't understand what the word means we need to stop reading these texts literally we need to do away with the um, colonial interpretations of these texts that interpretation it's poison it's killing us it's cre- it's creating psychological disorders kubantu bamoya because if you are a sinner and then we embulelwa lezinto hlale uzibona you can never make sense of what you are being shown the morality bar it, it, it is constantly swing, swinging yahlanisana lento sihlaniswa yini asihlaniswa yivesi sihlaniswa by the interpretation now sin <coughs> friction o ja o jame that is what begets form umzimba or umuzimba a house inji excuse me let me rephrase it is sin a friction between two dissimilar materials that begets electricity the only begotten of the father let me use another example getting expelled or discharged out of eden symbolizes the spirit's journey from incorruptibility or incorruptible light to corruptibility gross matter inyanga that is why in the in the esoteric schools utiwa the body the flesh is the tomb of the spirit or the womb is the tomb of the spirit in your in the old testament another example <clears throat> friction in heaven leads to a war the interaction of molecules is symbolized as a war the weaving together manifesting war manifesting form excuse me is expressed as the beginning of the fall from grace into what in to matter a great battle is waged 
between the angels or the angles of light and the light bearer or Lucifer is kicked out of heaven. If the light bearer is being kicked out, where will he now bear light? He is kicked out of heaven and then he falls or he is electrically discharged. Revelation 12.12 12 says, Woe unto the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea. Who rules the earth? The devil. And who is the devil? The devil is the planet Saturn or Satan. Woe unto the inhabitants of the earth. For the devil has come down unto you. The light bearer has come down unto you. The journey from incorruptibility to corruptible gross matter. That's what it means. The earth now typifies form, crystallization. The body and the devil, of course now, is the, de or the devil is the divider into form. He is, he is the principle that divides the union or the oneness or the stillness in heaven. He is the atom splitter. <clears throat> he is the atom splitter. The atom which can, if you invert it, that's where you are. Again, that's where we are. Atom, atom, mother, mother, matter, easy, mtuli. And this is why it's the woman who is tempted by the, by the divider. <clears throat> Can you guys hear where I'm going with this? It's the woman who is tempted by the divider of the brethren. The illusionist. Matter is an illusion, like I just explained. Form is an illusion, where there is only but I. And that I is spirit. And that spirit is energy. And that energy is pure intelligence. And there is not anything else but intelligence. Intelligence is the constant that does not change. The Bible says, For I am the Lord God, I change not. Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Intelligence is changeless. It cannot progress become better or worse. It just is. Raw, undefined potential in a state of stillness and quiet rest. There is a place of quiet rest near to the heart of God. Be still and know that I am God. Religion is metaphysics watered down for the layman, for the goyim. We need to realize this. There is a near to the heart of God, where sin, a place where sin does not molest. What does that mean? The place where being or separation from the Father Sin, <laughs> come on now, sin means separation from the Father. The Father is stillness. The unchanging, the unchanging. And what is sin? Sin is vibration, motion, velocity, acceleration. That's what it is. It is a place where intelligence or Intelligence or itongo, itongo subsists unseparated 
unexpressed, undefined, unconditioned, non-ordered, without induction, pertinence, nor disturbance. Kutu de twaga imatongwe, ezulwi the heavens, ekaya labandwe. There's a hymn that goes, or based on a verse, which says, Great is thy faithfulness, O God, my Father. There is no shadow, <laughs> nor turning. I change not with thee. Thou changest not. Thy compassions, they fail not. As thou hast been, Thou forever will be. Metaphysics in song, in scripture, I change not. But what does change, what does change, however, is the rate of vibration. That is what changes. That is which quantifies, or vibration is what quantifies the level of complexity or, le or lack thereof in the expression of intelligence in three-dimensional form. It is the rate of expression or the rate of vibration which quantifies complexity or lack thereof. The rate of vibration Molds the expression of intelligence or etong. Now, let me use water as an example. <clears throat> water at freezing point we call ice, yet it's still water. The only change being here the rate of vibration or the rate of motion. <clears throat> Water in a state of coldness or a field of coldness we call ice. A cold field of ice to use scientific terms, of which we also have uh, other types of fields or conditions such as magnetic fields, dielectric fields, electrical, hmm? what is, electrical fields. Let's bring in more. Ilozi, umdawe, umnono, umdiki. These are fields or different rates of vibration. In metaphysical thought, now this would what this would be what we refer to as the spheres or planes of influence on the tree of life. Ushangalizizwe, usimagadi. That is what it is. These now would be the steps on um, <clears throat> the tree of life. <clears throat> 